Joining us now is Paul Hickey. He is the Bespoke Investment Group co-founder. It's good to see you. Welcome. Good to be here. So goes Q1. So goes the year. That's what history seems to suggest. Yes. So if you look at that, the first quarter strong. Rest of the year tends to be strong, about three times the historical average for all years. If you add to that the fact that we were down last year after a positive first quarter, uh, you've been positive every time after that for the remainder of the year, not just for the calendar year, the remainder. So from this point going forward, it feels like throw history out the window, though, <laughs> just given everything that's going on, the uncertainty we have. We're worried about the banks. We're worried about credit. We're worried about the Fed. Right. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you never want to bet completely on uh, seasonality, but. You know, I can come on here and you've had guests for the last week telling you, making credible arguments that the Fed should be hiking rates, that the Fed could pause or the Fed should cut rates. I've never seen that kind of uncertainty in all these years where you could where the arguments are so credible for a decision a month from now. But so there is a lot of uncertainty, but that's been manifested in the sentiment of investors. You have conference boards, uh, more investors saying this, more consumers saying the stock market's going to decline mm -hmm. than rise. The CNBC survey. Yeah, and our survey talk said about the same thing. Two thirds. So yeah. you talk, if you try and give a bullish argument right now, people will laugh at you and say, how can you be bullish given all these negative things? But it's like a polar opposite of late 2021 when we were expecting the roaring 20s going forward. And the Fed wasn't even thinking about thinking about hike, uh, cutting, hiking rates. Right. So, I mean, it's I, when, when, when everything looks the plan should go a certain way, it usually the market tends to make things go the opposite way. You know, one thing we haven't really spoken about a, a lot and we, we need to and we will obviously earnings. Yeah. Rubber is going to, you know, meet the road soon. Well, yeah, on earnings, we're only what a couple weeks away from the numbers yeah, to start coming out. Two weeks, we start getting the banks, and those should be interesting. <laughs> but you know, for the last several couple of quarters, we've been talking about uh, the upcoming earnings apocalypse, and the last two earnings seasons have been very strong for the market. We've seen the month of March so far, we've seen 63% of companies beat EPS forecasts, 66% of companies beat revenue forecasts. Those are down from the post-COVID quarters. But they're actually still better than the historical average. Guidance, we've seen about 11 percent of companies lower guidance, 14 percent, 11 percent raise guidance, 14 percent lower guidance. That spread is right in with the historical norm. So these factors, if it gets worse from here, that, you know, that would be a problem. But so far, earnings have been holding up relatively well. You have a stock that you wanted to talk about, which we talked about with one of our prior guests. Kevin Simpson had sold Medtronic. You're you like it here. So when we're looking for stock ideas, what we want to focus on triple plays. So what we call a triple play is a company that beat earnings, beat sales forecasts and raise guidance going forward. So they have they have a positive outlook on things. Medtronic has been in a downtrend for the well over a year now. Uh, COVID, you know, put a crimp in their business device. Those kind of procedures weren't done. So there's pent up demand. Plus, people didn't get any healthier during COVID. So cardiovascular, diabetes treatments and uh, Medtronic reported an earnings triple play in February, first one since 2019. The stock trades for 15 times earnings. It's raised div its dividend for 45 straight years and yields about 3.5%. So I think in that kind of respect, that's a company that trades at a market below market multiple, has a little bit of guidance going forward, and you can see a catalyst for the stock going Quick forward. Quick on Generac, which you like too. Why? Generac triple play machine over history. Seven, uh, 13 of the last 20 quarters earnings triple plays. The last few quarters have been a little bit tough. On, you know, they over expanded. But as you come in, they have three tailwinds working in their favor. The unreliable grid, extreme weather and work from home. If you're working from home, you need electricity. I appreciate you running over here. <laughs> yeah. Literally. You're catching my breath. But they from only Q1. knew with the traffic. <laughs> like, thanks for being here. That's right. bespoke's Paul Hickey joining us here on Closing Bell.